All right, everybody. So today we are going to do uh, some sort of a box and design. And this is a book of Bill Holm and his Northwest Coast Indian art. On the front of his book, he has a Northwest Coast style box and design. We're going to do something similar to this. Not quite as elaborate on all the pieces, but it's going to be pretty, uh, it's going to have the same parts basically to it, <clears throat> or pretty close to the same parts. So we're going to start off with blank page and from the blank page let's see I have my page um, or my book going vertically up and down so that way and the first thing we're going to do is uh, kind of find the center of your of your page and we're going to put in an ovoid shape, a form line ovoid. And the form line ovoid shape, uh, I'm going to put in the uh, kind of at a diagonal, a little bit, little bit sideways, just a little bit, <clears throat> a few degrees. And then once we have that line across the top, then we're going to put another line down below. And these are just going to be the guidelines for this ovoid. And I have the top and the bottom. We're going to make the guidelines for the side. And like I said, this is going to be a little bit of an angle. So as you put these lines in, <clears throat> um, you're going to put them a little bit diagonally, sideways. All right, so there's the, the basic shape of my the outline for the ovoid. And then we're going to take and curve in the corners up towards the top. So this is the middle. If I'm looking for the middle here, that's where my middle is. So that's where I want the, the tallest section to be on this ovoid. Curve down. And then <clears throat> ideally you want to have the both sides of those curves the same. So we're going to take this and going down curve up there try to get it as smooth as you can I see this has a little bit of a corner there I'm just going to round out that corner we don't really want the, the corners in there all right so you know what to do on the, the next step here is we're going to take this bottom part and curve it down in and curve the corner so the top of the ovoid has more of a curve the bottom has less of a curve so <clears throat> come down and curve this in curve up and around the top <clears throat> so there's the basic ovoid outline and we're going to turn this out this ovoid into a form line ovoid so this form line ovoid then is <clears throat> going to have another ovoid shape inside this one and I'm going to put some guidelines in here the top we want to have the largest the biggest section so that's going to have the biggest space so I'm going to just going to sketch out kind of where that space is going to be at so this space is going to be the biggest and down here and below, uh, the, the bottom part of the ovoid is going to be the skinniest portion. And, or the thinnest, I guess. Thinnest, skinniest, smallest. So I'm going to sketch in. There's about kind of how I want <clears throat> that to be. And it's about maybe half the, half is width, the, half the size of the top is kind of a good measure that you can use so whatever this thickness is about half that way or if you start off with this one then it's going to be double on the top of course the sides are going to be somewhere kind of in between but it's going to it's going to flip it's going to um, gradually get go from skinnier or thinner to thicker towards the top and so <clears throat> I'm going to and we're just going to use this outline uh, to guide off of so it's basically this ovoid smaller and so I'm going to start off with now that I have my guideline in there, and then curve up, 
and we're going to go up to the top portion of that ovoid and the bottom on the other side do the same thing as that so it's going to curve up and then as it curves it's going to come up and meet the top <coughs> so this is now turned into a form line ovoid and a form line ovoid is the two ovoids that come together that forms Uh, this new shape. <clears throat> the shape is thin to thick. So it goes thin to thick. <clears throat> so there's the first <coughs> part of this design. Um, now we're going to put on some U-shapes. And the U-shapes are going to come off of the top and the uh, on the top on one side and the bottom on the other side. <clears throat> so over on this side of the U-shape, I'm going to come up and, and put a roof on the top of this um, uh, where I want the ovoid, or not the ovoid, the U-shape to end up over here. So I'm going to stick this in somewhere in here and say, okay, that's where I want it to, my target. And um, then the, the kind of the legs of the U-shape. So the legs of the U-shape are going to come up, right up off of this, basically. This one's going to come just kind of straight up. Straight up going to intersect with that <clears throat> other line up here and then I'm going to come over actually to um, well let's see actually let's do this other side first that way we can kind of see what we're doing here so uh, the bottom shape we're going to do the same thing so we're going to take this beginning part of a U and um, Put a oh, can't see it there. there we go. Put a kind of a floor, I guess, since we're looking at it from this direction, on how how far I want that U shape to come down to. <clears throat> so now we're going to come over to this corner and bring a line straight down. The intersect with that line that we just put there. So now we have one up here, one down here, and we're going to, uh, the middle line is actually going to kind of connect between these two. So these two lines are pretty much straight up and down, and this line is going to connect from here all the way from here diagonally down slightly until it intersects with this line. So well, I'm going to come through and once we get to the ovoid, I'm not going to draw the line through that because we don't want it to go through there, but I'm just going to kind of, uh, you know, keep going and running through. So I'll move this up here so you can see. Okay, so I'm going to take this line and right about, I'm going to intersect somewhere around here and then pop out again over here. So. Bring this line down to there. And then if I were to keep drawing down imaginary, or imagine that's coming down through, and then you're going to break through the surface somewhere over here, this line is going to keep on that path trajectory and head all the way down. Trying to make it straight. There you go. <coughs> All right, so now we have that connecting down through the middle. All right, now um, that we have this here, I'm gonna go back up to this top one and we're gonna turn this into a U-shape form line. So start off with, I'm gonna come up to the top and curve the corners in. So uh, you're gonna start to use this straight line. And then once I get towards the top, I'm gonna curve it over. <clears throat> and once I come across, then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So right about the same place that this one started to curve, I'm going to come over and hopefully this should be symmetrical is the idea. I always have a hard time getting them to look symmetrical from left to right. Uh, not too bad. <clears throat> not perfect, but uh, perfection is unattainable.
but we'll do what we can. So I'm going to use the eraser to see if I can clean that up a little bit better. And you get the idea. <clears throat> okay. All right. So we got that top part of the U. Uh, it's a little rounded on the top, I guess. You can, and this the U shape doesn't have to be as rounded as this. It could be a little more kind of boxy in some cases, but uh, I guess U shapes in general can be all shapes and sizes. <clears throat> so once you have this one here, the bottom part of this U shape is going to come down, and it's actually going to flare and curve outwards as it connects into this ovoid down here. So this line is going to come down, and then once I get down towards the bottom, uh, this guideline that I have here, I'm going to break off the guideline and then swoop over and connect onto this upper part of this <coughs> U shape here. The bottom of this one is just going to connect right onto it. There's really no swooping that you need. You don't need a curve, and I'm just going to make sure and, and darken up this line just to say, yep, that's the one I want, and bring it down. So that's the, the solid line here. <clears throat> All right, we're going to do the same thing with the bottom. So this bottom U shape is going to come down and start to curve in, similar to the other one that we did. I'm going to actually turn this around so we can see it from this side. Curve up. Same thing on this side. Somewhere around the same place that you're going to curve over, this one's going to come up and make a curve over and meet the top. And like I said before, ideally you want to have these pretty symmetrical on both sides, so the same the same curve <clears throat> if you can. Go back and adjust it if you want. This line is going to come down and then go straight down, but then once it gets and starts to meet towards this uh, ovoid shape down here, it's going to curve and flare out. So the same thing that we did on the other side and have that curve in there. All right, and now I'm going to darken up this other outside line of this um, other U shape here that's connecting down to the ovoid. Okay, there we are. <clears throat> so there's the basic design. Uh, we're going to turn these now into form line U's. So this is the U on the outline here. And then um, we're going to turn this into a form line shape. So we have a form line here, which is two lines. It creates that form or that, uh, that shape in there. To make these, uh, we're going to put some guidelines in here for the U's. So, <clears throat> first off, the th first thing that I want to do is you can always you can change the distance from here to here uh, when you're making a firm line U to a lot of space or a little bit of space. Uh, for now, though, I'm just going to put kind of a guideline for how big I want this roof on this U, or not the roof, but I guess like the attic space inside the inside the U. So I'm going to say somewhere in about here is where I want the the width of that, which is going to be pretty similar in this particular drawing to this to this width up here. So now that I have that as a guideline, I'm going to make a couple more guidelines. Down towards the bottom, I'm going to take a line and just draw a straight line up from here, and it's going to go outwards towards that guideline up at the top and get uh, wider on that side. The same thing <clears throat> on this side. So um, I'm going to look at the distance I have here and try to say, okay, somewhere around there is the same distance. So that's my target. I'm going to come down here and start skinnier. And as I start skinnier or um, go up, it's going to go from skinnier to thicker. Now that I have that target up there, I know kind of where I'm heading to. All right, so <clears throat> there's where we're headed to. Now we're going to take this and round it off us. Uh, and you want really um, to kind of try to match the top. Whatever you did on the top curve, you're going to try to do with the inside curve here so that you're not having like two different curves, one kind of big curve uh, on the top and a shallow curve on the bottom or whatever. So you're going to try to kind of mirror 
or um, parallel that curve as best as you can. <clears throat> and you know, protect perfection is unattainable. But we do what we can. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, you can go in and spend more time in there if you want to, but for the, the sake of the video, uh, I'll keep it moving along. All right, so as we come down here then now, for this bottom line, we're gonna curve this in. So there's my guideline where it comes to a, a straight line. We're gonna take this now and curve in, but we wanna keep this open. And by open means um, the space in between here is gonna we're gonna leave a little bit of space in between here same thing on this side this side is gonna have just a little bit of a curve and there's not much of a curve that we can do on here you can do a little bit of course so we're gonna curve just a little teeny bit little teeny bit in because it's already in that direction and then this space in here we want to leave open since we have that space open there uh, we really do want to open it up uh, okay so we're gonna open this up and just erase that little line in here Another line up here, we're going to take and erase that sucker. So, now that you can see that a little better, there's kind of like a little pathway, a little gate, a little, um, a little road, I guess, that kind of goes from this shape into that shape, and this shape into that shape. <clears throat> so that's going to flow together. All right, so that's, uh, this line is a little cricket. Cricket, cricket. Try to even that out a little bit. Okay, so there's a basic uh, uh, form line U shape. <clears throat> um, now we're going to do the same thing the other side. So take this form line U that we did, do the same thing down here. I'm going to spin my book around so it's a little easier. Same thing, go over and give a little bit of a attic space somewhere in there come down here put the legs on start down narrower narrower and head up to get a little bit thicker and of course ideally whatever width you're having down here if you want to try to get it pretty close or similar to the to the other side that would be good uh, the width over here now I'm gonna go over and say okay this is my width I'm gonna come over here and put a little mark and say okay that's about the same width as over there so that's my target now down here we're gonna put another guiding line and uh, leave this space open and then head up to my target spot <clears throat> a little off the target well try to get to my oh, up to my target spot there's a little closer <clears throat> and these lines should be uh, straight for now really what you know you can you can make u shapes different styles different ways depending on different um, things that you're doing and working on but for this particular one right now this sides of these U's you want to have straight lines that are as straight as you can <clears throat> except for the bottoms where we're curving them off all right we're gonna come up here curve off this top corner curve it around and come up curve it around there's that part and we're gonna go down and curve the corners of these legs in so actually before I do that I'm gonna erase this line beforehand just so we can get it out of the way okay take this and curve it in curve it in and that connects over to that other part of this form line ov uh, ovoid <clears throat> same thing on this side we're going to take this one and just a slight little teeny curve inwards and now that that's there, I'm going to open up this little gate, this little door, this little road, so that it flows in from this U-shape down to the ovoid, to the other side, and all the way down. So now we have the, the main um, <clears throat> primary shapes of this ovoid. 
or uh, this uh, box end design, I should say. So <clears throat> from this box end design primary, so this would be like all black if you were to to uh, start to color this in or color it in later. We're going to put in some secondary shapes inside here. So the secondary shapes, <clears throat> uh, first thing we'll do, let's see, we'll put the ovoid, we'll put a floating ovoid inside here. I'll give that a try. So for a floating ovoid, when you put it inside or an inner ovoid, the inner ovoid is going to go up in the, the negative space in between. So this is all positive space. This is all going to be kind of black all across here. And then up into the U is going to be all black and down because it flows. These gates are open, so it's going to flow all the way through and kind of be all um, the same color here. <clears throat> so this is positive. The negative space is uh, for an inner ovoid is going to have a smaller space in here and a, a wider space down below. It's just going to be opposite, basically, of the of the this form line ovoid. So I'm going to put in some some guide a little guideline to say okay that's about how far I want my ovoid to float or to be up inside this in inner part and then down below <clears throat> we're gonna have a, a wider space down here for this negative space so come up a little bit and I'm gonna put in a little guideline for how far I want that to go. The sides uh, are going to be, in this particular case, just a little bit different uh, in, in far as like, you know, the width, <clears throat> we don't have to have them necessarily um, the same as the ovoid, uh, the outer ovoid. So I'm going to go and put a little bit of a curve in here and see, okay, there's where I want that one to be. And the same distance over here, as close as you can. I'm going to have a little curve and say, okay, there's my guideline. So there's the box. We're going to take this box and round it, round it off uh, on the top and turn it into an ovoid now. So this is going to curve, curve up. There's a curve, curve up on the side. Come across, curve around. And then the same thing on this side, curve up and connect to that one. <clears throat> and then the bottom is going to be less of a curve. The tops are more curved, the bottoms are less curved, a little more boxy. So coming down around this side, loop it in, bring it across. and loop it in there. <clears throat> All right, so there's my inner ovoid. Uh, we're going to add a little bit to it though. We're going to put a fine line or sometimes it's called a tertiary line. All right, so the fine line is just going to go around this ovoid and we're going to have a little bit of a space down here and basically this space, whatever it is, it could be whatever you wanted a little more, a little less, it's up to you but whatever you decide on is going to be the same width all the way around this sucker. So this is just going to run like a, like a train track. And whatever this one is, it's going to curve up and do the same thing and have that same, same width all the way across. Around the full choo-choo train track. All the way around. Choo-choo train track is going off course. Getting a little bigger up there. <clears throat> okay. Let me suck it back in. Okay, here we go. So there's an inner, inner ovoid. This is going to be <clears throat> uh, all black inside here. And then there's going to be uh, negative space down here, so this is going to be white. And then this outside 
the line is basically going to be like black too, so this would be black. In some cases, if you wanted to indicate and actually color this in, then you could put another line all the way across here. So I could say, okay, you know what, maybe I want to go all the way across and make another little line so that in between this space is going to be black, basically. So you're, 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 you're making a, a, another area for this to be black. But, um, you know, I guess you can do that if you want, or you can just go on and kind of just color that darker uh, black, that outer line, that, that kind of um, fine line is what they call it, or tertiary line sometimes, <coughs> is on that outside there. Okay, um, so we're going to go over now, and that's pretty much it for the inside. We're going to go and put some shapes inside these U's up here. And <coughs> we're just going to do... Uh, Let's see, what should we do, what should we do? We'll do a split U on this one here. So a split U, <coughs> we're basically going to take this and split it in half. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, make a line that comes right down very lightly. We're going to erase this line later. So find the center of your U and bring a line straight down, straight down there. Uh, very light. Now we're going to go in this far corner here and we're going to make kind of a rainbow shape that's a little squished down that's going to start in this corner, come up, and then end, end down in this far corner here. So we're going to come out and start here in that way in corner. Curve up to hit that mark where the, uh, the center is. And then once you hit that mark, then it's going to whoop. Going. We're going over the rainbow. Okay, here we go. Down, curve down, and then it's going to come down into this corner here. So there's my, there's my target is going to come down, down in that far corner. <clears throat> All right, so there's uh, kind of the rainbow. Now we're going to come up and make the tippy part of this uh, T-shaped relief that's going to go inside here. And to do that, I'm going to come up and put a little dot and say, okay, this is how tall I want the point on my steeple or the point on the Chrysler building to, to be. And uh, from there, I'm going to come down and make a line that uh, is a straight line that is diagonal down towards the top of this rainbow. And just bring it straight down, straight down, straight down. Once I hit and get towards this rainbow, we're going to curve that out towards the rainbow um, and flare it outwards there. So kind of come down and then make a little curve. Curve it up. All right, we're going to do the same exact thing on this side. Come up to the top, and now you have the distance. This distance here from here to here is going to be the gauge off of this little guideline so that as I come down, I'm going to try as close as I can to get it to be the same distance from here to here <clears throat> before I start to come down and curve it in. <clears throat> All right, so we got that curved it into this rainbow. Now we have a little bit of a racing to do. A little bit of a racing to do. Uh, right in between here now we have the top of this rainbow and this guideline that we put in here. We're going to knock that out of there. So grab your eraser. Cut that through, and there you have it. That's the... Um, I'm going to darken this line here that I had earlier. <clears throat> That's the... Uh, split U, or the T-shape relief, is uh, also what it could be called. So this T-shape relief, or split U, is there. Now we're going to do a similar thing on the bottom. <clears throat> and so we're going to flip-flop this around just so we can work with a little better. Um, let's see. This time, let's see. We'll try something a little bit different. We'll take this and, and, and kind of uh, put another U-shape within it before we split it. So we'll split it, but we'll have another U-shape in here. So... This bottom part will kind of, we're going to have another guideline, so we're going to put a U within this U, basically. Um, 
show like that. And then <clears throat> um, for this one, for the uh, U that's inside of a U, we're going to bring the corner all the way down into this very, very far, far, far corner. So um, I'm going to put a start off my guideline here to go up. into there and the distance and this is a shorter distance I don't want it as big as the outside one so we're making this a little skinnier down to here here's another guideline so I'm going to turn this this way just so it's easier for me to draw this line I have a, a, these rings on the side here I make it a little tricky to to draw when I have my hand over that <clears throat> alright so um, we have that here these corners are going to go off into the corner, so or the legs of here. So this is going to be kind of closed off. So as this comes down, I'm going to curve it in right into that far corner. Go up and make sure it's looking good. Curve off to the top. Same thing on this side. Curve it down. And then this one's going to go off in that far, far corner. <clears throat> we don't want to leave those these ones open. So if you want, you can clean up your, your guidelines. All right. Um, now we're going to take this part of it and split this one within this one. So uh, I'm going to put my guideline straight down the middle. Make a little rainbow shape. It's going to come up starting in this far corner. Curve up, hit the line, and then start to bring that rainbow deck back down. disappear <clears throat> down on that side. All right, now uh, I'm going to go up and split it with the little steeple. Put a little dot where I want that to, to stop at the top. And then same thing with the other side. We're going to come down bring that line down. Once I get down towards the rainbow, Clear it out to the side. Same thing on the other side. Oop, my steeple's cricket. Okay, starting over. Here we go. Come on down. Straight line once we get down towards the rainbow. Curve it in. All right, now that that's there, we're going to get rid of this line in the middle, the top of the rainbow top of the rainbow to ya. And that little guideline that we have in the middle. And now that we have that there, make sure that everything is connected. You don't want to have any, um, you know, the, the, the connecting point here, you don't want to make it look like you're drawing two lines. They should just flow together so that it looks like it's one continuous line all the way up and over. Uh, I'm going to come in now and darken up this other line that's there so that um, it matches with everything else that I have there. <clears throat> All right. Looking pretty good. Uh, let's see, what else do we need here? Hmm, that, that, that. I think that's it for the side. I did forget one thing on the other side though. So let's go back and I think we're going to add one more here. So one more, one more line. So um, this other line, we're going to put another shape within this. Uh, and it's it's similar to what we did up here, but it's going to be a little bit skinnier actually. So uh, another secondary shape, a secondary U shape. So uh, starting in here, far far corner. I'm going to come out of this far corner and come up. And this is just going to be like a train track distance all the way around. Same distance from here. up and over parallel to this line that you have already 
come down and then bingo on that far corner all right let's see I think we're pretty much there guys erase these guidelines around that U um, you can erase all these other guidelines if you want to clean it up all right so uh, to indicate that this is a different color so this secondary shape that's in here this is going to be like black is traditionally what it might be on the on the outside for the primary the secondary shape on the inside or the secondary uh, yeah secondary form lines is going to be red so to indicate red since I'm just using a pencil here is I'm going to put some diagonal lines in to, to say you know what this is a different color that's colored in and it's going to contrast with the part that's not colored in which is this t-shaped relief here this trigon shape and it's going to say this is different than that and it's it's make it stand out a little bit more and in fact you could if you want to just use diagonal lines if you're not coloring in as a as a way to <clears throat> to break this up from this and this out this space right here is also going to be a negative space so that's going to be uh, white and then red and then um, let's see we'll go black and then this will be red mm, this is all going to be black in here <clears throat> and that's all going to continue down this inside is going to be also black so this in space this inside space in here this is all negative space and then we can do the same thing with the other side if we wanted to so we'll flip this around <clears throat> Um, this is all going to be black, of course, here, and then um, similar to what we did on the other side, we can take this now and <clears throat> uh, run some some lines in here to say this is going to be a different color, and this could also be red. little lines you can come back actually if you don't want lines I mean you can just go in if you don't want to put lines and just get some color you can get some some colored pencils or some markers or some paint or whatever else you wanted to to kind of add into there <clears throat> okay so this is going to be our box end design so I have a color pencil here if you wanted to add some color in uh, you can do it a couple different ways you can color it all in of course I'm going to go through and just add a little bit of an outline to this shape here this secondary shape kind of suggests that, you know what, this is going to be a different color. So secondary colors are usually red, traditionally, but uh, there's a lot of contemporary artists and just artists in general, I guess, really, that uh, you, can, you can make these colors different, you know? I mean, uh, it doesn't always have to be red. It doesn't always have to be black. Uh, there are some artists that are really sticklers about saying, yes, it does have to be red and black. And, teal or kind of a blue greenish color and um, that's okay <clears throat> all right let's go over here do the same thing with this and indicate and I'm just doing an outline here around it so that you can just see 
the, the secondary shapes are that reddish color. And then if you wanted, you can, you know, color it all in. Acrylic paint is good. Watercolor, there's some watercolor um, colored pencils actually that, that are, are pretty nice. And um, those are fun to use. Markers, crayons, whatever you got. There you go. So there's the final product of the final design right there and this is a simple version of it just a, a you can get a lot more detailed of course but this is uh, the basic elements of what a box and design might look like and of course I'll show you uh, Bill Holmes version that he has on his book and um, lots of detail in here inside and instead of having the, the ovoid um, just one color he has a uh, salmon trout head design or a fish head design inside here. Lots of other stuff going on inside these U's. And uh, he even broke this up into um, some different designs, a, 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 a ovoid and then a, a couple more U shapes off the top and the bottom to kind of really build onto that. So really nice other detail that you can go into. But um, really just to kind of start off with and get some idea of how things are, this is uh, one way to go about it. So there you are. All right, very good. Um, keep creating, keep drawing, and uh, have fun. Hope that was helpful to you, and uh, hope you followed along. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Gunas chish, gunas chish. Tsuyei kwasatin. We will see you again soon. Thumbs up. Good night, cheese.